That is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. This is the worst example of interventional radiology I have ever seen portrayed on TV. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist in New Jersey. Now, I got a ton of comments on one of my last videos about how there is an interventional radiology scene or scenes in Chicago Med season seven, episode 11. And I haven't seen this episode, but I thought I might as well react to it if there is some interventional radiology stuff going on here. So hopefully there's more than like a split second because that would be kind of a waste of a video, but I guess we'll find out together. Let's go. All right, so by the way, I have really no idea what Chicago Med is even about. I've never seen an episode in my life. So this will be episode number one for me and I'm starting off at season seven, episode 11. So I'm going to have no idea what's going on, but nonetheless, let's look for some interventional radiology stuff. I missed. I missed again. Whatever. Here. Please, somebody. Hey. Oh, wait, don't look at me, Gurney. Where's that Gurney? Wow, I forgot. You know, it's been a while. I used to watch these shows all in med school. If you've seen that video where I did how I stayed motivated in med school, I probably did that video like two years ago. I used to watch Grey's Anatomy all the time. And this, I forgot how dramatic it is. So dramatic. So that lady, no idea what happened to her. She looks like she has a rip roaring infection going on in her leg, but that's a weird spot for a young patient to have surgery. I guess we'll find out more. I'm very excited now. Dr. Charles, do you have a minute? Yeah, what's up? My patient three is subject from gluteal implant surgery. That's what it is. That's why I was like, not a young woman wouldn't have surgery on their hips or their bottom. So that explains it. A lot of women, especially in New York City that we saw when I worked with plastic surgeons, my first year of residency, they would do revisions where they would actually go in and remove a lot of like silicone injections from women's bottoms because they would go to like Colombia or Mexico or whatnot and get these just random injections of who the heck knows what. They'd be multi-hour surgeries and they would erode through the skin, kind of like this one. It happens more than you would think in the United States. Doctors, may we speak for a moment? Yeah. My daughter, is she going to be okay? We hope so. Um, but right now she's in septic shock. The first 24 hours are critical. I understand. Did something go wrong with her surgery? Septic shock means she is having a reaction to the bacteria in her blood system, causing her blood pressure to drop, which may need to be artificially kept elevated by pressors such as norepi or epinephrine. I'm surprised she's not in the ICU setting by now. It's imperative to start antibiotics and fluid immediately in these patients. She should be shipped up to the ICU for close monitoring. That seemed a little odd to you. The way she reacted to him, it was just deemed, I don't know, it was odd. What people don't realize is, especially emergency medicine physicians, they have to play like detectives almost because these kind of scenarios happen all the time and you have to read people and read their relationships and their interactions between each other. And it's way more than just practicing medicine. You really have to be a detective, kind of feel out what's going on. And this is why it can never be replaced by AI, especially in emergency medicine, because there are just too many things that you can't train artificial intelligence to do. You can't train artificial intelligence to read people, how the situation is a little weird and all that stuff. So this raises some red flags. You have to do a little more investigation before you get to the bottom of this. And any emergency medicine physician, nurse, tech, etc. comment below because I know you have to do this all the time. Very stressed, which doesn't make sense. She's been responding to her antibiotics. Her fever's coming down. It's from the silicone. What? A silicone embolus. The implant must have leaked and infiltrated the vascular system. You can definitely see that. It's exceedingly rare, but it can happen. When you inject silicone into your butt, it can migrate into the vessels and go into your heart and into your lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism, which can cause respiratory distress and cardiac collapse. We need to get her up for a CT angiogram staff. Oh, now the IR has got me thinking here because I haven't seen any IR yet and we're like halfway through this episode or they might be doing a pulmonary embolectomy here, which again, this is what I do. We'll see what happens. Ready to roll in a minute. Right. How's she doing? Not good. I intubated her and she's in septic shock. Did you get the CT yet? The image just came up. There's a silicone embolus in her right ventricle. Plate. What? I don't think there was. Let me go back. Now she does have bilateral breast implants. So I guess she has breast implants and gluteal implants. These are the breast implants right here. Now she just mentioned that the patient has an embolus in her right ventricle, which I don't see. There's a silicone embolus in her right ventricle. 
partially obstructing the outflow track. So you couldn't really see the outflow track there barely, but there was no obstruction. So basically they just showed a CT of the heart with no pulmonary embolism, classic. This is bad. If it shifts, it could occlude the valve and kill her. We gotta move right now. Let's go! No, wait, you can't drive. The smallest bump could dislodge it. Hold on. We don't have a choice. We have to get her to IR. Will, you could do the extraction there. In the truck? There's no way, I'd, I'd be going in blind. No, you could take serial CTs as you thread the catheter up. I'll read them and guide you through it. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> serial CTs? Oh. I'm not an interventional radiologist. I could cause an arrhythmia. I, mean, I could perforate a vessel, no way. Will, if that silicone shoots into her valve and you're not in this hospital, we won't have time to save her. Let me rewind here. So we do a pulmonary embolectomy. We advance a very large catheter like the size of my thumb through the right atrium, through the right ventricle, through the tricuspid valve into the pulmonary arteries. It can cause arrhythmia as we have this huge tube sitting in the tricuspid valve, not allowing it to open and close like it should. So you can see how that could cause a bad arrhythmia. And we've had many patients not do well from the arrhythmia. And it's just a risk of this procedure. But it's kind of one of those things where if you don't do anything, they could die. If you do something, they're most likely not going to die but there's always a risk that they could so this is one of the situations i have never done a serial ct guided thrombectomy i don't think that's possible because you really need to watch your catheter real time because you could cause some serious damage to the heart if you do not about to thread the wire you sure we don't need radiology no, it's okay. I can see where you are. First of all, there's no radiologist reading these CTAs. Secondly, there's no interventional radiologist performing these procedures. You can't just have some random person performing this procedure. Like, first of all, how do you even get access into the venous system to begin with? Okay, go slow and steady. You've got 10 centimeters until you're at the right ventricle. What? I don't even see anything. All right, 10 centimeters. Threading the wire. Also, what the heck is that? That's not even a real sheet that we use. He's also threading a catheter without the wire, which is, you know, fundamental step number one of what not to do. Turn 120 degrees. Turning. So I think what he has, <laughs> they're using an actual insufflator. That's what we use to inflate balloons when we're doing angioplasties and stuff. And that's what he has in his hand right there, I think. And he's rotating it. This, I mean, this doesn't make any sense. Down rates in the 50s. Here's another image. What's going on? Silicone. Also, he's just sitting there getting radiated by that tube. <laughs> this is this is so stupid. This is like really downplaying my profession. I'm a little disappointed with this. Okay, five degrees to your right, then inflate. That's at 71, pressure's dropping fast. The weird thing about this is I think they keep showing that CT scan and there's like a little glob, but it's actually in the left ventricle, not the right ventricle. So I don't know who made this. Why did they not hire me for this? No, 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 you gotta be kidding me. Hey, it's okay. I've been mapping you the whole time you're there. Stevie, we're only gonna get one shot at this. You gotta trust me, Will. Okay. Oh, God. So he has the syringe on the sheath and the stopcock is closed to the sheath side which means he's literally doing nothing he's also injecting air and it's just flowing out the top of that stopcock and doing zero things oh i guess he was injecting saline either way it's doing nothing Pulling back. back up to 86 rates back in the 70s sinus rhythm nice job dr hoffman all right, let's roll. Wait, 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 wait. I, I don't even, what did he do there? So there was a glob of silicone sitting in the left ventricle, but let's, that's besides the point. It was sitting in the right ventricle, flew into the pulmonary outflow tract, and he what? Grabbed it and pulled it backwards? So what, now it's just sitting in the heart? He didn't do anything. What? What? I, I'm so confused right now. So all he did was just pull a glob of silicone from the pulmonary outflow tract to the right ventricle or into the right atrium. I'm so, the, he did nothing and that silicone can just go right back up where it was at any time. This is the worst example of interventional radiology I have ever seen portrayed on TV. So I don't know why they, why do they not just call me? They can email me. I would have done a free consultation for this show. Maybe they'll call me next time. All right. So that officially concludes this video, Chicago Med Season 7, Episode 11. I am a little upset at the way they portrayed interventional radiologists. That was one of the worst procedures I've ever seen performed. It made no sense. It was completely medically inaccurate. So again, 
Why do they not consult physicians? I guess they don't really care, right? Most people don't know what the heck is going on and it's all for dramatic purposes. But you know, it hurts my heart to see something like that and see our field portrayed in such a way. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. A little disappointed. That's how I feel about this episode. So the first episode of Chicago Med ever watched, I'm disappointed. Please do better next time. As always, gently press that subscribe button. Join my channel if you want to and uh, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. And I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.